though, but I'm like going through the shit in these drawers. Oh, you're going through my house unannounced? I think our, our head's even. Uh, I don't know. I'm just looking at you. Well, here we are, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> another virtual episode of the sip i i swore to everything inside of my body that we would never be doing this again yet here thanks we southwest are. you snake assholes <laughs> yeah so lizzie and chris had flights to come in on sunday and all of a sudden out of nowhere like what the hell the flight <laughs> the flight literally gets canceled i'm going to sleep and lizzie calls me and she's or texts me and is like our flight got canceled and i was like and then oh. Southwest was like, pick another flight. And so like a dumb bitch I did. And then I woke up the next morning and that flight was canceled too. Well, you turned down your so. volume just a little bit. I don't know how. It's all backwards over here. <laughs> what, which one is that? Is it one or two? You're one. Two. Turn every mic down but one. Everyone loves our technical it was talk. on the second to top. Oh, okay. Well, then you were just screaming. And rightfully I'm sure so. I am. Because. I am. <sighs> Our thoughts and prayers are with Southwest in this trying time. But also, like, we're so mad at you, Southwest. And I don't know if we're ever going to get our money back, but here we are. I'm actually having, like, a pretty thrivy morning because I slept for 10 and a half hours last night. Woke up, went to yoga, just shoved a sandwich in my face, and I'm ready to party. Damn. How are you doing? Um, I'm good. <laughs> Well, Lizzie, okay, hold on. Let me start the show. Uh, okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth Home, okay? Hello, hello, and welcome back. We're so sorry that this is virtual. Nonetheless, had a shit catastrophe to deal with this morning. And then everybody on the freeway, it just, like, one point, it just felt like they wanted... They wanted craziness. Well, <laughs> like, I'm telling you. Semi trucks were like bat, like slamming on the brakes, skidding all about. There was one truck that like hit the brakes so hard that their tires started smoking. And it's like, did you not know we're all going 30 because it's rush hour traffic? Like, can y'all just chill the fuck out? Yeah. I mean, Mercury. It's I so nuts. I think is definitely in retrograde. Like everything technically so? that could go wrong. What? I, well, it Is must it be. Look at our lives right now. Look at us filming. <laughs> I watch, sometimes I watch uh, this girl on YouTube, um, Star Girl, the Practical Witch, and she'll do like a uh, monthly predictions, not predictions, she does like a tarot card <gasps> reading for the top of the month. And I mistakenly watched that because, you know me, I'm so superstitious that if there's anything negative whatsoever, I'm yeah. like, oh, it's going to be right. And I shit you not, days before you and Chris came here, she was like, Taurus, and you're a Taurus too. So, she yeah. was like, expect if you're traveling, lots of travel delays, lots of hard times traveling, and then your flight got canceled. And I was like, I don't know. So I don't know if I'm like here believing tarot cards or if I'm like, she well, just no, brought like, that into our world for us. So I don't know if we should thank her or be angry at her. I mean, she didn't do it. She just pointed out it was about to be. And the other thing is I have a girlfriend who's like never traveled during Mercury retrograde. This is Mer we're always in Mercury retrograde. It I, seems as if it never September ends. 27th to the October 18th. Like girl, that's almost a full ass month. That's 20 goddamn days. And we can't what the just fuck kind of games are we playing? Stop living. I still don't fully know what it means, but I do know like every time my life is in Because everything's a clusterfuck nightmare. I know. Every time my life is going crazy, I look it up and there we are. There we are. There we are. We're living in a nightmare. Um, so, well, what's been going on with you? What's been going on with me? <laughs> You are one half of the podcast. Um, it seems like more has been going on with you than it has with me. I've been writing, so I don't really have much to report on. Right. Not until it's uh, coming to fruition and that you can tell more I'm... about. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Well, I, I And mean... also, it's just like me sitting at a desk like, there's a lot happening in my mind, but the world around me is going on and I am doing that. Oh, my nails. I said, fuck you and got the green cow print. Mm -hmm beautiful i can't see it because it's so blurry but i'm sure everyone else can once we've guys 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 you know what? i'm really just so upset because 
I thought we were going to have costumes for this episode. I thought we were going to be I got a fucking costume. I got a great costume. Yeah, I know you got a great costume. The whole ploy of our costume saga was that we were going to... (laughs) <laughs> we were going to pick out we, our own costumes and then like close our eyes until we sit down and have the costume reveal for this episode to like together on camera. And then Lizzie sends me a picture of a costume last night. And I was like, wait, I thought this was going to be a surprise. And she's like, oh, shit, 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 shit. No, I mean, let's OK, let's backtrack. Let's <laughs> unpack this a little bit. Let's think about who's on the opposite end of the conversation. <laughs> Who pitched the idea of a surprise? Was it me? Yeah. Have you met me? Have you ever known me to be a woman who can appropriately carry out a surprise ceremony in any regard? Like, no. The second I think of something, I tell you, I can't even keep a thought to my fucking self. Like, of course I was going to show you what fucking Halloween costume I got the second I couldn't come to your house. (laughs) But I can still, but the next one can still be a surprise. But I really want to tell you right now. No, absolutely not. Just don't do it. Well, here's the surprise. It's not a gargoyle. Okay. Well, that is what Lizzie wanted to be very adamantly. I wanted to be a gargoyle. (laughs) So the next two episodes, we should have costumes to round out October. Um, But that's hoping that we can all. And neither of them will be a gargoyle. Mm, Yeah, no. I've just been uh, spending all my time immersing myself really as a Colorado Ian. I was going to say native, but I'm not that. So like a Coloradan. A Parker? Because you're, you're a Utah native. Yeah, I'm a Utah native, but I'm really immersing myself in the culture. And I thought the best way to do that was to download the Nextdoor app. Have you ever played on that? No, but I've heard it's incredibly toxic. It's crazy. It's the most drama-filled yeah. app that I have ever encountered in my life. And I just feel like I'm sure it's like as toxic here as it is everywhere. Like I'm sure it's the same everywhere yeah. you go. I just never explored it in California. And the reason like I finally uh dabbled into it is cuz I really needed to find a gardener because as much as I wanted to be like the handyman of my dreams and really take on this beautiful yard I also don't want to like be responsible for ruining it (laughs) and like the only thing that I can do is the ride on lawnmower kind of like I still can't even execute that well and I've also felt like a little bit of a liar because every time I like post a picture of like the dogs running in the grass and there's the perfect straight lines for the last two weeks that's not you it's been the gardener and I'm like oh Oh my god people probably think that it's me with those perfectly straight lines in the grass and that I'm just so uh, well equipped to own a property. Um, I mean, honestly, Ryland, there's no shame in that game. I couldn't even keep the spooky flowers alive that you gave me. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's been like a week. And then I bought another. I know. And then I got another couple, another bunch of flowers like the same, and they're dead now too. <laughs> And I don't, I just wish that I could keep them alive because it breaks my heart. And I've been like, I'll water them, I put them in the sun, like, and they're just like. And had I know, had I know sprinkler system or like there was, it, it's more than just the lawn, you know, there's like the, yeah. the, the lake pond, you, which I was, I, I was, you also, have an ecosystem. I was trying to name, uh, my brother had asked me if the lake had a name and then we were just joking that it should be lake pond because everyone thinks it's a pond. So the lake's name <laughs> should be lake pond. <laughs> Yeah, and I really love that. That's funny. So, anyways, I got on next door to find a gardener. Found a gardener. It's been wonderful. And you also have to like winterize here, which means like you have to like blow out your sprinklers and you have to like prepare your house. Blow out. What does that mean? So that you get all of the water out of the sprinkler systems in the case so they don't freeze. They don't freeze and explode your pipes. That's why, like Texas, they don't normally blow out their sprinklers because they don't normally have crazy storms, and that's why they're all. Is the term actually blow out? Yeah, a sprinkler blowout. Yeah, because they that bring sounds their so like aggressive. So there's lot to lots to learn here, and it's also like full blown fall now, which I haven't experienced in like twelve and That's a half cold years. That's cold as balls. It's like sixty degrees. No, it's not cold as balls yet. It's getting cold, but it's oh, sixty degrees. It's isn't that what it is in LA right now? I don't know if it is. Then I need a jacket. So my whole point. Oh well. Oh no. my god! It's sixty degrees here too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fall there too but what i was saying is the trees i haven't experienced like fall fall in a long time they're like the trees are all bright red and bright yellow and it's so delicious and fun and everywhere you go you're just like oh my gosh this is amazing because you don't get that in la and you kind of just forget about it so i'm also sad you didn't get here but you'll get there before all of this okay so all of this we'll to be me, there on monday to me getting on next door super drama filled super political super crazy i'm scared to like make a step off my property because like i'm afraid that if my dog shits and i like forget a bag i'm gonna get like publicized on next 
next door by like somebody's nest door yeah. cam and they're going to be like we're going to find you and there's going to be like 600 comments about like the the asshole that didn't pick up their dog's poop i always do pick up a poop i'm just saying it's crazy over there but i was scrolling because now i'm just like looking and looking at all the neighborhood drama and there was a legit fireball in colorado the other night where like all Explain, of these but no so they're what? they're calling it a fireball and when i really was it? into it it's a meteor but all so there was fire in the sky a legit like i'm scrolling next door and i'll show an asset yes. on the podcast but everyone's ring uh, and nest doorbell cams activated for this so they're all po posting their like their doorbell cam footage and it's a fucking fire rock flying through the sky and it's insanity Jesus. and everyone's like look at the fireball and they're all excited Wait, in your fucking neighborhood yes that you could see for like a hundred miles but like everyone's videos are crystal clear from their front doors and they're all publishing their do you videos. have it from your front door uh no my door was facing the opposite direction so i That's didn't terrifying i didn't get it but <sighs> I'm, I'm going to put it, but then I did like more looking into it and what it actually is, is a meteor. And I've never really like looked into what a meteor is and people are all. It's like a burning rock flying through space. Yeah. It's a solid, <laughs> it's a solid piece of yeah. de debris, such as a comet, asteroid, or meteoroid that originates in outer space and survives its passage through the atmosphere to reach the surface of a planet or moon so it's like a fucking rock on fire flying through the sky and people are excited about it and i'm like yeah it's pretty. well usually because it's flying through the sky the energy burns off a majority of the mass before it actually hits so not much like actual damage is done but it is very exciting very exciting are you crazy it's I no, I mean, like, you're excited right now. You're, and it's like, excited doesn't mean like, oh my God, yay. It's like, like oh my God. <laughs> well, like, I went, I went on this rabbit hole of like what it actually means. And then just like, I, I couldn't believe it. And then I looked into like, oh, well, how many actually like reach the surface of the earth? Cause this is just like a big ball, a big rock on fire flying through the sky. And 500, right. 500 of them reach the surface of the earth each year, according to my yeah, Google but search. But Google search how big the rock is that reaches the earth eventually, because it's not cuckoo kachoo. It's not cuckoo kachoo, but it's definitely like I I was like, has it ever? It's hit unsettling. A I'll give you that. And it a is few unsettling. people have passed away from meteors, and then like I was I was searching it. I was like, has a meteor ever hit a person? And listen to this one. It says on November thirtieth of nineteen fifty four, an Alabama woman was struck by a meteorite while taking a nap. The meteorite crashed through the roof of her home and struck a radio, then hit her hip. The 8.5-pound meteorite is on display at the Alabama Museum of Natural History. <laughs> Wait, what happened after it hit her hip? She went and to the what? hospital and had a huge-ass, like injury hernia she, or she's fine not a hernia what is it called hemorrhaging yeah i thought you said she died no i said people do die it's not super and common. then you read a story about a woman who did not die no because i wanted to keep the show light i don't want to go into the depth and i wasn't even no, trying no, no. To i just wanted to be clear because it sounded like she died of a hip injury so i just wanted to i just oh, wanted to know no but the picture is pretty like i'll put up the picture i'll put up an asset of the okay. picture of her laying in the hospital bed where it hit her on her hip and it's like pretty yeah. it's a lot and no, it seems awful like, i like, would my, rather i'd rather not be hit by a meteor rock. And, i would like to i will say that i'll go on rock and as saying that that's why my question was well like d has it ever hit a person my real question was like do people die from it but i didn't want to google search that yeah. but then yeah like some people do die from them and then that's why i was like well why are people celebrating Did you google search that yes and i was like why are people celebrating meteor showers i'm like i'd be running from them and then watching them from the internet later on in life interesting <laughs> you have nothing <laughs> well no i just googled it and the literally the first thing that comes up on impact event wikipedia although no human is known to have been killed directly by an impact i over a thousand people were injured i searched further and i discovered that there were oh, that's a specific and that's then, a specific meteor airburst i did in 2013 i did some more um digging and uh wait i found another article seven times Yes, that's People what I saw too. Killed. And 
they're actually worth like some, some money. Like if you find them, people like to study them so you can get some, like, like if one falls into your backyard and doesn't hurt you on the way down, you can actually yeah. like have a pretty big payday. So people like it. Um, and other than that, I think like the, other well, there's that solar today at five o'clock, we're recording on Monday and today at five o'clock, there's that solar storm. Oh yeah. You which did. scares the shit out of me and reminds me of that Nicolas Cage movie, the knowing which scared the fuck out of me mm. that shit when i was little the movie the knowing scared me so bad you probably haven't seen it no absolutely not but it's all about like the, it's the end of the fucking world as we know it literally <laughs> and aliens come and pick some select children and it's like i'm probably not a select children because i'm 31 <laughs> and no one's gonna come for me and give me a bunny and i'm like honestly anytime i'm looking through our text right now to see if i can find that solar fucking solar storm due to hit earth today could cause havoc for power grids and on the east coast it might create some sort of um what's that uh solar flare in the sky that you see northern lights effect oh well if we so that might be kind of beautiful and that will be past the time of this upload. So if this never gets uploaded, we had a major solar power. We know upload. why. <laughs> we know why. <laughs> that shit scares me. I mean, it's just as scary to think it that at any time, too. like anything could happen. Life is so precious. I think we should all just take a deep breath and be super grateful for everything that's right in front of us. I don't think we all do that yes, enough. Sir. And so, you no. know, let's just like, and I was trying that for a long time is like, but when you wake up and go to bed, really stating like three specific things that you're grateful for. And I think it helps yeah. set a positive uh, outlook on life. The other big thing definitely does. that happened in our lives is Shane returned to the internet, which was, Oh, he did. So, oh, he did. <laughs> I must have missed it. <laughs> was he? He wasn't trending on YouTube, was he? Nope, not number one for a full twenty-four hours or anything. Which no was very oh exciting. God. We had, I mean, after the past year and a half, uh, there was no. We didn't know what to expect, and honestly, it's right. been so like it's been amazing and so i'm very excited for that and if you haven't already seen the first episode it's a series of three videos so you can go over and watch the first one when this uploads tomorrow is the second episode where it really starts to get spooky and ghost hunty and like some Ugh. legit scary shit happens and i'm not even like you know me i'm no like i'm no ghost You're not a believer. seeker and lizzie was yeah. like texting me before she even watched the first one I was like Am it I looks equipped? scary it is scary and I have to go and stay alone in your guest room. And I'm not about to go to your house if Shane's like, watch how haunted it is. The like, guest, I won't even go with him in the basement. The guest room is literally right next to my bedroom. Like, they're going to come. With a hole in the wall where you all, you keep your fucking Samara bitches hidden. Like, I'm not here. I'm not. I can't. I'm Speaking not. Speaking of, there's something behind bad. you right now. <laughs> Don't, dude. I'm not looking at myself. I literally brought my taser in here just in case, like, something happens. Oh, my God. Yeah, Lizzie's in I'm my house. I'm fucking scared, bro. She's all alone. She's holding down the fort in California. Uh, in I'm going to take all your fucking knickknacks, bitch. Oh, my. Okay. Well, did you want to segue then into your beef with me while you're sitting yeah, in my house? Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I wanted to say, like, speaking of new content, I happened to see the vlog that you posted about the uh, quote unquote, the quote unquote, the quote unquote couch fiasco. <laughs> right. And the first thing I heard was Shane mentioning a motherfucking estate sale in California. Like, there's no need to sell the items that you have at this estate because you have a very starving friend named Lizzie who will take all of your items off of your hands. You're not starving. At no. And I also... Whatever. I, I literally... I was the one that said we should have Shane literally sell. fucking said. Shane literally fucking said as if I do not exist. And I quote, anyone in the comments want a couch? <laughs> As if he's never met me. As if the, I've said anything to him in our relationship other than, motherfucker, may I please have your goddamn fucking couch? This is a different... And then after... No, no, no. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Because I have not been so offended in this decade as I have <laughs> when I heard decade. Shane motherfucking Dawson speak the words, anyone in the comment section want a couch? Also, Shane, I'm in the fucking comment section too. And yes, sir, I want a goddamn fucking couch. And then also, to add insult to injury, the conclusion of your vlog, Ryland, and I'm looking at you on my laptop screen, so that's why my eye contact's crazy right now, was you giving a fuck 
fucking couch away to somebody who's not me. You're really looking um, all out of sorts right now. Am, oh, I am? <laughs> I'm looking all out of sorts? Okay. Okay. I'm glad you're in a safe space where you can yell at that house there. Um, no, I want to defend myself because you very specifically wanted a couch that's still in that house. And I was corrected because... I'll take any couch. I just want... Let me just be clear. I'll take any fucking couch. Okay. The garage sale we went... Well, okay. I was trying to defend differentiate the difference between a garage cell and a state and an estate cell. I thought an estate cell was just like when you're moving and you're getting rid of like everything in the house. It's like a museum of furniture where everything is up for grabs. But a few people had said that it was maybe a little more uh, dark, like if somebody has passed or something, but I, you gotta, yeah. So anyways, I do want to have a, one of those in California eventually. And I'm sorry that you didn't get the couch. It would have been more expensive to ship the couch to you than the couch was physically itself. And after the fiasco of a situation that we had getting it into our house, Shane was just like, I want to pay any service that just picks it up and takes it to a donation place that mm. will take it. And I was like, well, no, we know so many people in Colorado. Somebody's going to want it. And so I sent it to the group text. I guess I should have included you, but I could not mm -hmm. have, I was not going to drag that back up to the barn and it can't just sit outside and fall in Colorado. So I'm so sorry for your loss. When I, I appreciate the apology. And honestly, <laughs> I can find forgiveness in my heart for both you and your husband, Shane Dawson. Uh -huh. And I wish you all the success in your future couch endeavors. And I look forward to moving on from this with you guys. Well, I, <laughs> I already have, like, you're seeing right behind me something that uh, this office that I'm in right now, I have bought you three different again. sets of furniture for this office. And it's just so oddly shaped that it does not work with anything. So I bought a new... I honestly can't tell what's going on back there. Well, nobody can because I painted it. I took everything right. off the wall. So I just wanted a little something going on. But it's... uh Yeah. We got like this faux fur beanbag chair from Restoration Hardware Kids that was... Love that. We thought was going to be beautiful and everything. But like it, it it's for a kid's room. So like I'm just going to save it. Is it, it too small? No, they're huge. But th it's just uh. like... It's not the design I'm going for in my office, you know, like I want to class right. it up a little bit. Um, right. So I'm looking for a chaise lounge chair day bed situation for my office. Well, have you hit up Facebook Marketplace? Because I'm considering starting to sell things on Facebook, Mar Facebook Marketplace because I have so we keep wanting to fill this house with furniture that we fall in love with. And then I just realized that it's like, and then you hate it. Well, I don't hate it, but this house is a little smaller than that house. And I'm just you know, realizing things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like Kylie Jenner realizing things. All right. Um, Was that Kylie or Kendall? That's Kylie. Okay. Are you even a fan? I don't know if you're right about that. It, I'm definitely right about that. No, you're right. You're right. People you're are right. going like, to fight right. you about this. Okay. No, no, I want no, you to right, look right. at the document. We don't have to fight. We just overcame the couch scenario. <laughs> well, that was we only beef fight. with you. I think I've been very uh, generous to you about the furniture I've already gotten rid of. And I don't know if people yeah. even want to hear us fight about furniture anymore. No, Quite but we frankly. don't have to because, you know, that beef is squashed. Okay, great. I want you to look at the document and ask me your next question. Lizzie wants to know if Ryland is actually watching Dancing with the Stars. You're the one that wrote this. I know. I forgot. <laughs> and so I like, didn't know you don't care anymore say. because I'm very passionate. No, I do care. Are you actually watching Dancing with the Stars? Thank you. That's what. That's how I wanted you to, del to deliver that. And yes. I, I know, but I like you need a prompter. <laughs> he was, said, look at the diet. I was like, I don't know. Is this a, is this a trap? <laughs> like, you just written something like... <laughs> Um, I don't know. Yes, I am. And I'm watching one tenth of every show because, well, one really. Tenth. They are long. <sighs> How long are those shows? They're so long. And I think they Are they three fucking hours, dude? Like, honestly, how long are they? Because I watched, because I, I wanted to see JoJo. Right. And I, and after JoJo, I was like, well, why am I still here? Yeah, you only you. That's how you watch the show. Is you like scroll to the people that you're interested in, and then you see like Tyra's intro and like what 
outfit she's wearing that day. But I've like ha- I don't even care about Tyra's intro. Well, my pro okay, I have a real issue. And I was like screaming it at Shane the other day and he was like, I don't care. Like <laughs> I don't who, care. who are you screaming this at for? <laughs> because she's peeking. Like her mic is peeking the whole time because the intro's so loud and they have like these fake claps going on the whole time. And so she's like, yeah. Welcome to Dancing with the Stars. And it's like the mic peaks at ooh, all and i was like it's ooh. a live show can they not turn down her mic and every week i come back hoping they're gonna like make it so her mic isn't peaking maybe you should should you produce the show that's what i'm thinking i'm like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hello i'm right here <laughs> because i can Is hear the mic peaking. Listening? and then the other thing that i just like couldn't believe which was weird the other day i guess uh one of the couples tested positive for coronavirus and they seem to be doing good yeah they were that's still the dancing, episode i saw but well they had no symptoms but they were positive yeah but when tyra was enter- and introing the show they like i think the clapping and screaming is like a, a recording Track. that they play and then so she like yeah. intros the show all like fabulously and in the fierce way that tyra banks does things and then she transitions into like the serious news of the coronavirus and she's like two of our couples have tested positive for corona but it's still like the screaming and cheering is going and i was like this feels very weird yeah so like i have some issues with the production of the show if they they need a second did you watch that couple perform yeah it was i mean i feel bad for them but it was odd well, i mean i wonder why they even did it like just take the fucking week off and then the well, judges no, were because like, that's honestly, not fair it wouldn't be fair for them to just take a week off and stay in the competition thick ass show. well yeah jojo's the best on the show and it's because she's a professional dancer I have nothing against her but i will say no. the other person i scroll to is olivia jade and i don't care what you think about Same, olivia that i didn't jade. want it She's I great. I didn't want to admit it on the podcast. Okay, fine. Yeah. Jesus. She's a great she's dancer. Also probably, she's she's a... watch her be a trained ballroom dancer and she just doesn't tell people that. Oh. <laughs> no, I um I like it takes a lot of guts to like get back out there after a scandal of a, a large scale and like I think she's yeah. killing it and I think she's like holding her own with great poise and confidence and like good on her for that and not only the confidence but like she's really putting the work into the dancing even if you are a trained she's dancer good, yeah. she's doing really good so like me I'm vo- I'm I'm rooting for her and I'm getting on my phone I haven't voted yet but maybe I will this week and I'll even vote for Olivia Jade so take that everyone I was gonna say wow you're voting that's so crazy he's so involved well I honestly forget about it but my great grandma like reminds me every week like it's dancing with the stars is coming on tonight and it was she did tell me it was like britney night so that did get me there even a little further because the dances with the songs you like are even better just because it's fun but then yeah i thought thought jojo nailed that dance i was she was great i also think that jojo's getting really good at being like passionate and kind of like you know selling her acting chops more so it seems like in these dances than in the J team. Right. I I haven't seen the J team just yet, but I mean, her DREAM music video is where it's at for me. My last beef with Dancing with the Stars is they promoted it so heavily as like Britney Spears nights, but they didn't get the rights to the song. So then it was all covers of the song. And I was like, yeah, well, that's, that's not- what I was thinking that while I was watching it too. I was like, is it chill for you guys to have a Britney night where Britney's not getting any royalties? Like, <laughs> But and here's what I'll say is I haven't watched Dancing with the Stars probably since it premiered. So they're doing something right. Like they've got me there. I've heard a lot of other podcasts yeah. actually. Well, they, got my, they dragged my ass there and Stormy's not even a contestant. <laughs> <laughs> so Maybe she will be one day. Um, it really did just take JoJo posting her dances on her TikTok. So when I was scrolling, I was like, okay, fuck all luck. Oh. And then I was. Yeah, and then I looked at the YouTube dances, and then I was like, well, I guess I just searched three dances from the night, so I should just watch the episode. And then I watched the episode, and I was like, this motherfucker's four hours long. Like, I'm out. <laughs> and, like, turned it well, off. No, you have, to, it. I was like, you have to scroll. I will coming back. And I, always I don't tell- have the energy to scroll through a show. My- like, just, <laughs> just hit it and quit it. Like, do you need that many motherfucking contestants? Like, half no, these mo- do no, we know don't. who these people are? No, like, and I what scroll right fuck? through them. I go, doop, 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 doop. But there's people like my grandma who it's like an event for her. And she won't start like 30 minutes in to be able to scroll through the ads. And it's not like she's like on the internet where she's going to find a spoiler, but she like wants to be there live. And that includes watching all the commercials. And I'm like, grandma, 
I can't watch it with her because then you'd have to watch commercials. So well, also like with commercials, how goddamn long is it? Five and a half hours. <laughs> no, stop. Tyra changes 20 <laughs> times. Five and a half hours long. Um, okay. Oh my God. The last thing I want to hit on before we get to hot topics is subtitles are driving me nuts. And I know like they're there for a good reason, but why do they have to like I go in I know you're a subtitle girl and I recently What are you talking? Turn your fucking turn your closed captions off. I- Okay, but my problem is they reignite them every step of the way. Like, I have to, I'm like watching. Well, who's dead? What are you talking about? Okay, well, right now, specifically Hulu. Like, I finished one episode of Only Murderers in the Building, and I had already turned off my subtitles. And when the next episode starts, there they are again. And it's like, excuse you, I've already turned these off. So. I don't and, know, baby boy. This sounds like a personal problem. I don't just, know if it's a universal issue. It sounds like you've got your settings all fucked up. No, I don't have my settings all fucked up. And it's on. It's becoming the norm on every platform. And I understand. I, I want there to be access to subtitles everywhere. I just don't know why yeah. after I turn them off, they have to like reemerge into my life. And all of that's why that's why I think it's worth exploring your settings because that sounds like a me problem. Yeah, I don't think well. I just, every platform is trying to force subbies on everyone. Well, you know I what think I'm saying? you watch with subbies, so you don't know the pain. I, but I don't watch most of my TV with subbies, and I watched a lot of Only Murders in the Building this weekend. In fact, every episode. How many are there? And did not. I think there's like eight or nine now. Okay, so I'm only on like five. But I love the show. It is so sweet and i love steve martin like i've loved steve martin since i was a young child and it is so nice to see him out and about with our good friend selena gomez (laughs) that being said um i never had the subtitle issue with my hulu account so like i think well that was just like a side note more so it was driving me to the fact that like i've never been influenced by a person in a television show more than i am with selena gomez like the outfit oh yeah did you get your ears pierced no not yet but those like gold hoops that she's rocking i like have never wanted to be a woman more like i yes i can wear them as a man and it's fine but like i need i want like the hair and the outfit and i like kept taking pictures of her in those gold hoops because i wanted them so bad and i was just wondering if like anyone else wanted the hoops like her and then my mom hell yeah has now we're, we've been like design decorating her loft well she has and i've been like along the journey with her and now she like wants to pivot the whole design journey to now like have the focal point be a a couch that's similar to the velvet one in only murderers in the building. So God, like, I love that for your mother. Just could not be more influenced by the show. And then I was just uh, wanting to see like, when's, it's a stunning show. When's the last time you've been influenced by anything? Like what's the, when's the last time influencer marketing has worked on you? Oh, I'm influenced by Haley Bieber almost every day. <laughs> like what's the last thing you executed buying? Um, from Haley Bieber, probably hoop earrings. Really? Uh, yeah, biker sets, biker short sets. <laughs> do you get the exact um, ones, or do you go and try to find like similar? No, I get the Target one. <laughs> I get the broke bitch one. Um, recently, <laughs> I bought uh, two of a certain type of pants from Abercrombie because influencers told me to do it. Which ones? They're the kind that have the button that's like no, off not, kilter. I, I, oh, I know what you're talking about. I meant which influencers. Like, who are you being influenced I, by? I like. I hate to say it, but like again, here we are with Addison Ray. Like, I bought two outfits in different colors that are exactly the same. That I'm like, I'm pretty sure I saw Addison Ray wear those, <laughs> but it's not that she's wearing them. It's that they are cute. Do you right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the same is true with Haley Bieber. Like, she is cute. She's a cutie patootie. Yeah, I like her style. Yeah, I never really look at something that Kendall Jenner is wearing and think I'd like to wear that because nobody you know can I mean? wear something she's wearing and pull it off. Like even if it looks good on no. her, it's not practical for anyone else but her. It's like made specifically and for I, her. Yeah, and it's like I think people like Kylie and Tana look sickening in the shit that they're wearing, but never would I ever wear it. Right. Because I'd feel silly, but also like I think I would all I would feel like a bad bitch in a gargoyle suit. So I'm I might I might be a special case. Different strokes um, for different folks. But yeah, I'm influenced all the time. I it wasn't an influencer. Um, that, I remember the, what I think the first time I was influenced was by Julia Stiles' character in um, Julia Stiles. Sh- yeah, like back in the day, I think it was. Oh, I just don't know who that is. 
Julia Stiles was the lead in the 10 Things I Hate About You with Heath Ledger and Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And it's an adaptation of The Taming of the Shrew. At any rate, I thought Kat was fucking sick. And I wanted to be a dark, crazy, weird girl like her. And is she related to Harry Styles? No, this is... Stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The only thing, mine wasn't even an influencer, but then I did influence my mom to get it. It's like the Dawn dish soap with the spray nozzle that they've been playing before the YouTube ads. Like it was so like magically delicious that I could not not get it. So I got it right away. And then my mom saw it at my house and she also, is there something going on in my house? No, but I did get scared. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing right. happened. But... Well, <laughs> we've got to get to some hot topics, but first, today's episode is sponsored by Babbel. Now, when you're traveling to a destination and you don't know the language, it can definitely be a challenge to accomplish even the simplest of tasks. I can relate. When I went to Paris with Shane, when we were like still freshly dating, um, it was very hard when we were trying to go do what the locals would do and not just like super touristy things to like find our way around and about the town. So luckily there's Babbel, the number one um, selling language learning app. And through Babbel's bite-sized lessons, you'll learn new language skills that can actually that you can actually use in the real world, from greetings, menus, and directions to gaining a deeper understanding of culture. Babbel is a travel essential. So Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Um, other language learning apps use AI for their lesson lesson plans, but Babbel's lessons were created created by over a hundred language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective and you can choose from 14 different languages, including, including Spanish, French, Italian, and even German. Um, Plus, their speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. Um, so there are so many ways to learn with Babbel, uh, including you can access uh, podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. So right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free, which is incredible. Uh, that's six months for just the price of three. Go to Babbel.com and use promo code THESIP. That's B-A-B-B. E-L dot com code the sip babble language for life okay elizabeth gordon i have what? i want your hot take on kim kardashian's saturday night live appearance <laughs> jesus christ turn your mic down oh am i peeking um, for you am i tyra banks on dancing with oh my gosh i'm like pulling my shirt for you scandal Ooh. um so You've written here that there was backlash for hosting so many haters. I think that there's always going to be haters. No, the there was like, an, well, and you never know how, sorry, I cut you off, but you never know how much it's more so dramatized by the media. I don't know to what extent that means. Well, the media is dumb as fuck because the ratings for the show were up, I think something like in the mid 20% than usual. And I think bottom line, like uh, apparently their season opening had the lowest ratings that it's had in forever with Owen Wilson doing mm -hmm. it. And like, honestly, I get it. I forgot it even happened. Like I didn't even, it wasn't even a blip on my radar. So then when they bring Kim Kardashian in and everyone's like, why do they bring Kim in? It's like, because the show is dying because the ratings are going down because it's been around for over 40 years and it's kind of lost its appeal. It's become, in my personal opinion, it feels like something that's sort of like become a little bit too safe and a little bit, less interesting because it's not necessarily pushing the boundaries of society's comfort with comedy which is what it initially was meant to be it was mo it was meant to be like a comedic speaking truth to power type of deal and for a long time it's felt a little bit like it's playing it really safe and not uh you know questioning authority like it once did yeah there's very few segments on saturday night live that appeal to me enough so to get me there without the ploy yeah. of a star that i love like if i see the sketches on youtube hardly any of them make me laugh and i don't it, i also yeah. it might just not be like my type of comedy like i'm not like trying to hate on them specifically but someone like yeah. kim kardashian got me there immediately like it was saturday night and i was like oh shit like yeah. i want to go see kim kardashian on it and then when i like googled it and it was all so negative about like why is she there and even celebrities chiming in being like wait why is kim there and i'm like what are you talking Deborah about Messing hate on her or something i don't remember i think it, it was someone like that and i was just like yeah what do you mean like she is 
she is the zeitgeist. She is pop culture. She is entertainment. Like, it doesn't matter if she's an esteemed well, she's actress. Also, and also, like, I thought she did a great job. I honestly, I couldn't, I didn't care to watch the whole thing. Like, they kind of lost me at that Aladdin sketch. Like, oh, I just don't care. Awful. And, and like, I laughed when she was doing her opening monologue. Like, I'm not going to be a third failed political endeavor. In this I, like, she took real jabs. She so, had, and like, she's so funny. And I don't know if she wrote it, but she approved it. And you can tell yeah, that, like, she definitely did not write it. No, but, it, but it. it was funny. Like, yeah. It was, it was and funny. like all of her delivery wasn't perfect. I'm sure it's like nerves combined with like not being a comedian, which is very specific. Like I wouldn't be able to deliver on all those jokes either, but the writings by itself with her confidently delivering it, like really had me there. Like I was like, you can tell that she put in the work for this and really took yeah. it seriously. And I thought it was and great. I yeah, and also, you know, I think that they got lucky because with the C-SPAN stuff and, like, the fact that Congress has been talking to, like, is it the CEO of Facebook? Who's, whoever that woman is at Facebook, like, and all these other sort of, like, con congressmen speaking to, like, social media, you know, moguls about their products is, like, mind-boggling in reality by itself. So it's like SNL got gifted these bits that are actually so close to reality because reality right now is just so goddamn laughable. Right. Like, did you see that Congress guy asking the Instagram woman or the Facebook woman about Finstas? No. It's hysterical. He's like, well, you guys are going to stop Finsta, right? And she's like, well, no. Like, do you know what a Finsta is? And she, like, <laughs> explains what a Finsta is. And he's like, so you're going to shut Finsta down. And she's like, well, that's not... That's not how the, that's not, a Finsta is a is an Instagram account that's just a regular Instagram, so we can't just like stop a Finsta from well, happening. He just didn't get it. And also when they're like, "How big's the algorithm? Like this big or that big? Did you bring the algorithm? Like that part's funny because it's like that's literally what our congressmen are saying right now, and it's terrifying. And that <laughs> like, when they when they had that initial hearing, that's when Instagram and Facebook went down for like an entire day. Correct. It is actually, which is pretty funny. I d oh, was it not related? I, mean, I thought it was. No, it's not related. Fin uh, Instagram and Facebook going down was a total fucking accident. And there's like a, like it was such a bad shutdown that even Facebook employees could not get into their buildings. <laughs> I did see that. I just think and it's, it's, yeah. Oh, and I it was not planned. This was a full blown mistake and they don't have enough employees because Mark Zuckerberg's trying to like keep his shit like less costly less costly and all this stuff but the biggest most glaring issue is the fact that there are empiric studies that say that instagram is bad for the mental health of people who use it and they're using that to capitalize on ad space to target people so basically what you and i talked about initially in that uh, in like one of the our very first dilemma. podcast episodes right the social dilemma like all of that is true and being proven and on the record and yet we are all still so toxically linked to these things that we won't just turn it the fuck off, even though we've heard multiple times that we're being manipulated by it politically and socially and emotionally and independently as as people toxically like forced into loving this device. And right here we all are still on. It. And I don't think it's fair to I mean, like Instagram or Facebook could be a problem. Yes, but it doesn't stop just there. Like that's my same problem with the media is they always will look at a story, find a nugget of information and take it and sell the worst because that's what gets the clicks. That's what gets people riled up. And that's what gets people talking. And I know that's why like a lot of people will say like, well, Twitter isn't real because it's like a place where people go to be upset who maybe haven't like looked at a situation in full context. They're taking what's being fed to them by a headline or a clip or something that's skewed in a way to evoke an emotion out of somebody. And I think that was my problem. Like, and we don't have to get super into the Katie Keurig thing, but I just think like, all the headlines about you her, call her Katie Keurig. I always call her Katie Keurig. And I just I, I like to call her Katie Keurig. Um, like my coffee. Okay. But that was my problem with that whole thing is like I think it was the Daily Mail. They like the headline was so just like that she hates women because she had talked about like not necessarily wanting to mentor the woman under her 
and because she felt like she might be the one replacing her for XX, X and X and like the book's not out. So we don't have full context. I'd like to believe that she was like writing out her truth. And then like this one nugget of information went like viral because it, the title's like Katie Keurig. Keurig? What, what's her real name? Katie Keurig? Keurig. Keurig. Dude. No, Katie Keurig. <laughs> I've said Keurig for so long, for a week now, that I just like, that's all I know her as. That it's just like, she's she's anti-woman. She's, uh, she's horrible, and she's just all the way bad. And that just bothers me. Like, the truth's probably somewhere in the middle. Like, you never know with all of these things. And I know it's not the only accusation from her book like she wrote herself that like she heard whispers about matt lauer and she like still wishes him well so people are upset about that too but like even with that like it's her work colleague we don't know the dynamics of their relationship i'm not saying that it's like that becomes like a moral thing where it's like yes that was up to her to like i mean i think the bottom line is we don't know what her take is on all of the information that she's providing and i bet that she's not bragging about the fact that she didn't feel confident uh mentoring another woman in this field because of the toxic nature of the field where there could be a woman and another woman meant it was your replacement i think what she's talking about is the dark truth of the time as a cautionary tale and the dark truth of the time is she's a woman in this industry who's hearing whispers of, of abuse at other women and doesn't feel safe or confident enough to come forward and end the abuse herself like those are but but we don't know and that's also yeah. me just speculating but like i highly doubt a woman who's been in the public eye who's been as cautious as katie Keurig for her entire career is out in these streets bragging about toxic behavior and, inst and institutionalized misogyny. Like more, more likely is that she's sharing her negative experiences as a cautionary tale so that history doesn't have to repeat itself or, and we can continue to find growth. Because if every negative thing happens for a reason, the reason might be just so that we don't have to in, in, engage in another one of those exact negative instances again. Yeah, and it's an, you know what I'm saying? it's an interesting dynamic because with having one of the most powerful jobs in the world, seemingly like a direct line of communication to the American public, like that's what she had for a very long time. She also had very little power. And like, even when I worked at Clever, it was like, yes, we were all for forward facing talent but we were all pawns based upon like what our higher ups or our bosses would allow of us so like we don't know what kind of pressures were on her how she feared for her job or what she was going through so my main point is like i'm not judging her morality i'm taking uh issue with the media who like takes human out of the equation and paints a caricature a caricature out of somebody and tells you their narrative and spins bad because and bad and bad sells. because drama sells so like i'm not out here defending daily mail i'm not defending katie keurig i'm just saying like i hate how i hate how negativity sells that's like that's i like Honestly, I feel like you need to send Katie Couric a Keurig. <laughs> <laughs> like at this point, like not to, I think what you're saying is beautiful and important. And at the same time, low key deluded by the use of Keurig instead of Katie Keurig. Keurig. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and God. we'll all have to wait um, and find out. I just hate uh, taking away the voice of somebody with a headline and we'll all have to find out what yeah. it actually is like when her book comes out later this month. And that's just that, but do you want, or if you have anything else to say, go for it. If not in lighter news, I don't, I think, I think that you, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. Okay. So you have dear Evan Hansen down here. <laughs> oh, I put that there. Or did you put that there? I didn't put dear Evan Hansen here. I have nothing to say. Did you see it? No, I did not see it. One of us saw it. Honestly, I want to just make sure that Ben Platt is is okay. I want to make sure that he's doing all right in these trying times. Is it just because people are being happy. brutal about him? Honestly, it's it's uh, it's a guttural instinct to be brutal about what he did on that screen. Oh my gosh, Lizzie! But so you're wishing him well. At least you're saying you're. I hope on to his God birthday. that Ben is okay. <sighs> 
Because there were some times in that theater where everybody was laughing and it was not because it was intentionally funny. And it was not an appropriate time to laugh given the story details. Wow. And um, and it was in, it was in, it, it's like when someone farts in a classroom in the middle of a lecture. Like, you just... <laughs> Like, are you supposed to just move on from it? See, I think like, I, like nobody's mature enough to not laugh at a fart in a lecture. And it's kind of like every time Ben Platt was on screen, you can feel that that boy is like, this is my Oscar performance. This is my lame is I am Anne Hathaway. Like I am doing the Lord's work. I am a channel of his message. And then it's, and it's just like everyone in the theater is laughing hysterically. And it's not funny. He's like See, scream crying on stage. And I kind of like got, I got that vibe just from the trailer alone. And so I was like, if I tune into this, it's probably not like watching with great intention. So I just didn't go see it. I mean, I do have to say the other actors in the piece were stunning, beautiful. Interesting. Wow. Imp imp impressive. Okay. And I have to also add on to that, that Ben Platt, detracted from every beautiful scene of their work because you found yourself thinking wow this town this actress is so fucking good that she can do this scene with that version of ben platt in the room lizzie <laughs> <laughs> i do not co-sign like this. honestly <laughs> i don't co-sign this Cut, cut, cut. I'm done. I shouldn't even have brought it up. I just saw it was on the document, so I, I gave it its, its light, and now I'm wishing I wouldn't have. Um, I think we've been going for over an hour at this point. Is there any last yeah. thing that you want to hit on before we say goodbye to everyone? Yes. I want to love Ben Platt. <laughs> I want to love him. And in his own words, <sighs> but I don't. <gasps> Okay. I don't want to love him, but I don't. Okay, Lizzie. All right. And that's enough negativity for the day. Um, I'm... I can't imagine. See, I'm a Ben Platt. I, I, I consume his content. I give him the views. I paid for the motherfucking ticket when everyone else was just sort of like, fuck you. I'm not giving you a chance. I gave him the chance. I want to love him, but I don't. But I can totally imagine one night without him. And that is the motherfucking problem. How's that sandwich? Is it good, Daddy? Well, I've been looking at it for the last hour, and I just want to finish it. It's really good. It's the nap. Here's the deal. Finish it. Motherfucking finish it. Here's the other thing I want to say. Oh, uh, this comes out on Wednesday. William Shatner might be heading up to space, which is kind of a big deal, as he will be the oldest man in space. And he Who is, is you know, William Shatner. Excuse me, baby? Who is that? Don't ask that. Okay. Don't ask that. Yeah, I love him. Um and then uh, I also want to add that, did you hit these TikTok links I incorporated in the doc? Not yet, but should we save it for next week? No. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> I'll leave my sandwich Tick back here. So TikTok's legitimately becoming like a crime-solving entity. And so there was this guy that posted this thing that this, uh, this TikTok, he's like, this woman rear-ended me and then she gets out of her car and she's like, why the fuck did you hit my car? And he's like, that's not how rear-ending works, baby. Here's the playback tape from the gas station of you hitting my car in the back. You rear-ended me. You intentionally drove into my vehicle. And then another man who was, so this tape goes viral, right? Because this girl's losing her shit. She's like, why the fuck did you hit me? Blah, 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 blah like all this stuff. And she's like, no, but do you remember when you hit me? And he's like, no, you hit me. So it's a he said, she said situation about a rear ending. He provides social security, uh, social security. He provides security footage of her hitting the back of his car. And that's it. The video goes viral. Another man who was actually present when the shit went down, found another angle of a camera and went further back in time. And you see that this asshole in this Lamborghini or whatever fucking sideswipes this woman. He hit her car. And he was going to keep fucking going. And that's why she rear-ended him. So when she's saying, you hit my car, you hit my car, she's not lying. And he's calling her a liar on camera and then posted it as if he could erase the history of him being the instigator of the situation. Not that both of their hands, not that either of their hands are clean because like rear-ending someone because they sideswipe you is still <laughs> rear-ending someone. It's like only... But it was just... 
It's like it was only just TikTok so cool to watch the mystery unfold. Yeah, like yeah, right, dude, you're a fucking liar. She's she did rear end you, and you did sideswipe her. That is pretty crazy. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah. So I thought that was cool. And in other news, I've been able to reopen the TikToks that you've been sending me lately. So I have been like glancing at TikTok, not like on. And do you love it? Well, the ones that you've sent me are pretty funny. That's all I've seen. Yeah, I curate for your pleasure, my friend. Well, this has been a good therapy session. I feel like it's literally ther like I feel like I'm logging on to talk to my therapist because it's like the same setup. <laughs> I don't use my microphone, <laughs> but you know. So it's been a good It'd therapy so session. Accepted. Next week, as long as uh, the airlines can keep it under control, we'll be back together. We will not again. be flying Southwest. No, we won't. They can't. But honestly, well, my aunt was going to Vegas yesterday, and her flight made it through but your two flights didn't <laughs> was she flying southwest yes and she got out of denver to south to las vegas on southwest and she's so, the only one good for her i'm glad she made it to vegas and here we are virtually um i'm sorry that it's not our uh standard quality but uh we hope you enjoyed nonetheless we'll be back next wednesday with a brand new episode you can follow us on social media at the sip official we're also on there personally and elizabeth yes sir anything no oh we're gonna be dressed up in costumes oh yeah for the next two episodes hopefully as long as we can get together um so uh we love you very much we'll see you next week goodbye and, and that's, that's the, the sip, sip. That was the worst we've ever done. We should give it's them one more. It's because of the delay. One more. Let's give them what? one more. It's and not going to be better, baby. Can we try? Yeah. Three, two, and, and that's the and sit. That's okay. the sit. You got to just do it at the normal speed. You I, can't wait for me. It's I'm, the sound okay. of fucking video. Thing. We'll see you next week. I'm like, yeah. Goodbye. And that's the sit. That's the sit. Okay. No. Oh, bye. <laughs> uh.